Howdy, everyone. My name is Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. For those of you not in the know, we're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On every episode of the show, a few of the folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to a randomly selected clip from over 500 show submissions that we've gotten from podcasters so that we can find what we call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. Then, they'll need to pick the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices. Before we get the show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants today, because the lineup's a little different. Starting with the just back from wherever he's been for a few weeks now, Dash. Hello, everyone. I have been out. I don't know where I've been, but it wasn't (laughs) fun, wherever it was. (laughs) Gotcha, gotcha. Also back this week, we have Christy. Yeah, the, the portal opened and both of us just spilled out. It was it's, <laughs> We're really happy that we got back here in one piece. Yeah. We also have Oliver joining as a contestant this week and not the producer. I'm so excited to be here. Woohoo. We've got Jesse. Hi, how are you? <laughs> no woohoo this week. I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> and we've got Max. Howdy, headliners. Good intro. My favorite word got used. Howdy. And as our producer this week, we have Alyssa. Hi, everybody. Very excited for this week, personally. And I know, Alyssa, you have a bit of a product update for us before we jump into things, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, I do. Okay, so have you heard about our podcast promo pack? And Eddie, all projects have free access to the podcast promo pack, which includes four generative episode art options featuring your brand colors, over 10 keywords, three show note options with chapters, and now social media captions, and so much more. Eddie not only makes podcasts more accessible, it also expedites the upload process and helps optimize podcasts for SEO, YouTube, and social media. To download your free promo pack or just try Eddie and get a free transcription, visit eddie.headliner.app. All right. Awesome. Cool stuff all around. Promo pack is super fun to use. Like it actually is fun. I actually feel dopamine explode out of my brain when I click on it. So with all of that out of the way and my brain all dopamined up, let's just dive into the show with our first clip. Seeing as Dash is back with us for a first episode in a while, it's only fitting that we start with him. All right. All right. Nothing so bad can happen here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So let's fire up a screen share. And Dash, you just need to cover your eyes while we get the clip rolling. Yeah. That's the right expression. It's, yeah. about, it's about being really, really direct. I do marketing. I'm a marketing consultant. I help people with marketing as opposed yeah. to going off in lots of detail about, about me and my yeah. my career or my background or any of those things. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then um, the fourth area is um, the Aussie, uh, which is basically a Google business profile. So, um, you can set up a Google business profile. It's absolutely free to do and um, basically puts a pin on the map if you've got like an actual building of where you work. If you don't have a building, say you work from home on your service space, you can still have a Google business profile, um, but you won't get the pin. But if somebody's searching for what you do in that area, then you should still um, show up. And there are ways to optimize your Google business profile as well, such as making sure that you've got lots of reviews on that. Okay. All right. So there was our clip and Did dash here across the pond, huh? Yeah. I mean, you were talking about like accents and echolocation. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Manifest in UK, probably London. Yeah. Uh, that's that what mean? I'm hearing. That's what I'm um, hearing. So here are your three choices for today. Dash. The first one is the cool department, a monkey pants production podcast. Number no. two is marketing for introverts and number three is roi a brand story i'm going with two marketing for introverts oh yeah okay i kind of like the roi one for it i mean i heard marketing consulting i mean that's the keywords i'm picking up on and you know the introvert thing i didn't key in on anything but you know (laughs) who knows okay that just seems you know final answer b marketing for introverts all righty Marketing for introverts is correct. I knew it. Nailed it. 
There you go. I didn't pick up on the introvert stuff either, but yeah, nothing introverts. But I mean, it was the only one really. They mentioned marketing, I think, a couple times at least, and the subject matter was around, you know, consulting, all sorts sure. of stuff and profile views. So. You know, you try to throw me a wrench with the accent, but you couldn't fool me. It's also okay. UK. Duly so. noted, I'm thoroughly put in my place. <laughs> so okay, Nice try. Nice try. <laughs> Let's learn a little bit about this show from their podcast description. Marketing for Introverts is the podcast that explores ways introverts can successfully promote themselves and their businesses in a world where everyone else is shouting. Do you have that daily challenge between not wanting to put yourself out there, but also needing to promote your business in order to make sales? Marketing advice for business owners centers on personal visibility, making an impact, raising your profile. How does that fit if you're reserved and quiet and you prefer to listen and reflect? If you're an introvert business owner looking for ideas and support in a noisy world, you found it. So there you go. Kind of an interesting idea for a podcast because, yeah, marketing a business and being introverted Feels like it wouldn't be compatible, but it's definitely out there. So absolutely. Very cool. By Ginny Proctor. Thanks, Ginny. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Also, a very good, clean podcast art on the part of the show. I can appreciate that. For sure. So moving on, let's jump over to Christy, who was also out last week. Let's and go. We'll play our next clip for him. You know, almost every brewery and distillery has at least one cat for the exact same reasons that people in Mesopotamia and brewers in Mesopotamia and brewers in medieval England had cats too, to keep control of the rodent population in these spaces that are storing a lot of grain. We can look at the history of cats as being very tied into grain production. Because of that, at the same time, we're starting to produce beer as well, and beer would lead to distillates. So they're also very much tied to the history of alcohol. Yet another wonderful thing about kitties. For our final guest speaker in this episode, I'm grateful to have had the chance to meet the boss of two distillery cats who told me what it was like to be, well, a cat boss i guess i don't know colin take it away and we never heard from colin okay <laughs> so there's our clip for this episode obviously it is about cats i'm assuming oh yeah let's let's go i'm excited as a, as a cat dad to two cats i'm very excited <laughs> as someone extremely allergic to cats i'm a little less excited but <laughs> let's fire those titles off so that you could pick which one it is number right. one is six degrees of cats Number two, pass the catnip. And number three, soft kitty, warm kitty. I think on six degrees of cats is, is you see, whenever I pick something, it's always like the, the thing that's like on the nose for what they were talking about. So they were like talking about reasons why people had cats for something to do with killing rats and birds that were eating a bunch of wheat back in England. So mm -hmm. like six degrees of cats is like very, very good. Like I get that. I think I'm going to pick that one. Okay. I've been wrong like four times in a row though. Like let's see if I come back, had a break and I win. So let's do this. Okay. Six degrees of cats is correct. It is actually ah! the title of this podcast. <laughs> there you go. Welcome back, Christy. I was All hoping right, you okay. would say like something about six degrees with Kevin Bacon and you would dissuade yourself from doing it. But. Oh. And I realized that's how I would talk myself out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you would have done that. Yeah. So congrats. You um, got that right. Yeah. And, this is the third title. That. Just one more time, please. Sure. Soft kitty. Warm kitty. Yeah. No. I got, I got to sample that <laughs> in a song or something. I don't have to pick that one just on name alone. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I kind of just like, my brain was like, listen, you're going to forget that. We can't handle that right now. Specifically in that voice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need that like sampled and put in some like dubstep song right before it explodes. Yeah. Right before the bass drops. Mm -hmm. Just, okay. Yeah. You're, you have my permission. I'm signing whatever needs to be signed for that. All right. Cool. IP approved. Yeah. Okay. So here we are with the show description for six degrees of cats. Why were cats in ancient Egypt, but Satan's familiar by Europe's middle ages? Why do serial killers and despots hate cats? 
And how the heck does all this random cat stuff connect to us in the here and now? Cat worshiper Captain Kitty, a.k.a. Amanda B., investigates these and other hard-hitting questions with a diverse set of guest experts from across the globe. So there we go. Six Degrees of Cats. Pretty good title. It says everything about it. And yeah, I actually really like the title and I like the artwork for it, too. Yeah, great art. Yeah, Christy, since you got it right, bonus question. If you were a cat, would you rather be a distillery cat or a bodega cat? Bodega cat in New York. Like, I just want to hear, like, as a person that it, it, like dreams about being in New York, I've got distilleries in Nashville. They're boring. Like, nothing happens in them. Bodegas, stuff happens in there all of the time. So, yes, bodega cat, officially. So you think all the distillery cats in Nashville are applying for jobs at bodegas in New York right now? Is that yeah, the they're looking for bus happening? tickets. It's like a bus ticket issue. It's like they're constantly filled up with cats trying to get to New York. Okay. Living the dream. There you go. Noted. I wish I had a good pun for that, but the only pun I can think of is fish related. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Yeah. Where does a fish apply for a job? Linked fin. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Oliver, you are and next a lot of up. Cats on LinkedIn too. Catfishing. Yeah. They're catfishing <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oliver, you're up. We have a clip picked out for you. So you know the rules. I think there is a cat at this Airbnb. <laughs> I'm so allergic. Not a serial killer, but also don't like cats. Yep. It's this cat allergies. It's the struggle. I gotta close them. It's not easy. It's like anything in life. The beginning is always the hardest. It's when you look back that you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I was able to make it this far. And this is true for life, that all of the difficult things begin dark because you don't necessarily know where they're going. But if you keep your hopes and your dreams and your faith and you're confident in yourself and you never give up, you can create the light in your life. I know it because I'm trying to do it. That's what I'm trying to do. And I know that I'm not the only one trying to, trying to do this out here. A couple of things I found on the internet about the never ending story. The never ending story is about human nature and how important it is for someone to find their true self. They must find friends, make connections, root through their history and accept who they are. Okay. There we have it. So right off the bat, I totally thought they were talking about the movie, The Never Ending Story for maybe half a second. But that's just me. And let's fire off these titles so that you could pick from one, Oliver. Number one, Questioning Minds. Number two, Inquiring Minds. And number three, <laughs> Inquisitive Minds. Oh, give him the hard one, man. This is so, this is like, like punishment. It. That's the easier one, Christy. We actually, I, I told Alyssa that we could make it harder earlier. This is impossible. Now the last one was in, Inquisitive Minds? Yes, Inquisitive Minds. Scratch that one. What were the other two? Inquiring what? Minds and Questioning Minds. So I don't believe that it wasn't about the movie The Never Ending Story. <laughs> Okay, maybe. And because of that, I'm going with two inquiring minds. Inquiring minds is correct, Oliver. I think everyone's we're we're on a roll so far. So you were completely correct. God. Very good guess. Yeah, I would have completely botched that one. I would. Personally. Have, I just no. I would have flipped the coin three times. That's well, I, I have a better bet. I know Alyssa's thought process when she's picking apart mine. So I kind of had an idea. That's all. Wow. It's not fair. Okay. So really quick for my sake, Oliver, um, would you have still picked inquiring minds if I had changed the first choice to inquiring minds? Are you saying two mm -hmm. different words? I am. Mm -hmm. One starts with E-N and one starts with I-N. No, the no, 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 no. As I, <laughs> those are the same word. <laughs> no, they're different words with different definitions. I'm sorry, Christy. I would I, not have chosen inquiring minds. Gotcha. I, I see why Christy thought I said the same word twice now. Yeah, because <laughs> which word did he say? Yeah, 
Exactly. He said inquiring, <laughs> not inquiring. I don't know. And Wait, which Ian. one was it really? It was it was Ian, right? It was Ian. Enquiring okay. minds. But they're pronounced Excellent almost identically. Yeah. Yeah. So let's learn a little bit about this show now and read its description. I'm not judging. I'm just curious. Inquiring Minds is a podcast about things that perplex me on a regular basis. Tuesday episodes will be about nothing, sort of like Seinfeld, except some laughs, some tears from laughing, and some shade. Friday's F's to Give episodes of Inquiring Minds will cover topics like mindfulness, self-care, and boundaries. Expect some tears from crying when I get deep. This podcast is brought to you by Arican's Life Productions. That's right. I'm Puerto Rican. So there you go. I guess inquiring minds makes a lot more sense than inquiring when you find out what the show is about. I also think it's cool that they have multiple segments on the show. F's to give is that's a podcast name in itself. So I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to our fourth clip with Max. Let's do this. That's the spirit. Primarily, I make the sign of the cross over my body. I believe that that secures the the line. You know, I'm talking to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the body of Christ, and to no one else. Then I say, thank you for giving me a consciousness at all. Thank you for the events of the day, winding down now and preparing to go unconscious. So would you hold on to my consciousness until the morning? And if there's anything that you can do with it in the meanwhile, please feel free. And so one night, about 23 years ago, something different happened than any time before you said that prayer. So you want to tell us about that night? Yeah, I was on a retreat. I live in Arizona, and I, and I did at that time also. In, in the north of the state, it's mountainous, and there's a lot of camps. When we would go on retreat with any kind of groups, it usually meant driving to the north, to the piney part of the state. I was on a retreat with a bunch of other people, friends of mine. I was part of giving the retreat. Okay. Wow, that was deep. Oh, oh man, I want to know <laughs> if it was going to go to aliens or not. I did not think that was going to aliens. I didn't <laughs> think so either. <laughs> but <laughs> something good, happened. Good to this guy right game, before man. went to bed. Yeah, no, man. I just, I, I, I was just feeling it. I think okay. it's definitely going to aliens, Christy. I agree with you. <laughs> you see, so that's going to aliens. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Well, let's see what Max comes up with from these three titles. Here are your options. The first one is "Afraid of Nothing" podcast. Number two, Afraid of Everything podcast. And number three, The Spooky and the Spectacular. Oh, this got a little harder from last week, I guess. It was getting a little too easy for me on easy mode. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm at like easy mode and a half. Can you say that again? Yeah, that sure. Afraid of Nothing podcast. Afraid of Everything podcast and the spooky and the spectacular. Maybe it was going to aliens now with these title options. I feel I'm I thought it was saying. like a religious podcast and now I'm really not sure. Hmm. Um, That's yeah, what I was well, getting to, by the way. I'm sufficiently confused because like one is a direct response to the other. So I'm like, OK, feels like it's one of those two or it's the oddball, the third one. But yeah, I'm just going to go with the third one because now Christie's convinced me it's about aliens. I don't know if he just totally threw me off track. Maybe it's a new element to the game where <laughs> you get kind of thrown off track by the other participants. We can now like interfere with each other. But yeah, let's go with the spooky one. Okay, so the spooky and the spectacular is incorrect. It is actually Afraid of Nothing podcast. I'm decided, sorry about I that. I could not decide if they were afraid of nothing or afraid of everything. Like, <laughs> I felt like both could have been true. And just to not have to make a guess, I just went with a third. Okay. Well, it's an interesting thought process there. Like, I definitely see where you're coming from. What? But... This cover art's crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. It looks like That's a Magic the Gathering unrest. card. This is the I was going to say podcast. it looks like a Megadeth album. <laughs> Yeah, wait, I thought it was like a religious podcast. This is what I just listened to? Yeah. That is nuts. Wow. No? Okay. Yeah, what are they talking well, about on this one? got my attention. <laughs> well, let's find out about this show real quick. Afraid of Nothing, based on the award-winning experimental documentary, explores life in the afterlife through the lens of shamans, 
mediums, ghost hunters, authors, EVP, which stands for electronic voice phenomenon experts, scientists, researchers, wizards, and other awakened individuals. Hosted by Bob Hesk. So there you go. Pretty cool. I think we were all caught a bit off guard by that artwork. And I didn't realize it was actually tied to a documentary, which is super neat. Yeah, super cool. I was convinced it was like a spirituality podcast about getting closer to God or something with that segment. So, Mm -hmm. which I guess that's, I don't know. I'm like, was it like just such an oddball segment that got picked? Or is that a good segue into it? Because it is kind of connected, I guess. It's like a different perspective on the afterlife. But I don't know. It sounds cool. Cool podcast. Yes, it kind of, it kind of is like, it's, it's a clip that if I ran into it on social media, I think I would have had enough context from the art to know better. But in isolation, I know what you mean. Like, it, it was kind of out there. So, yeah. Moving on to our last contestant who hasn't gone today. Jesse, you're up to bat. Yeah. You know how this works. Yeah. And so that's kind of my take on it is figuring out, you know, when I'm with, with people, you know, meeting them where they are, allowing them to come out of their shell when they're ready, but not shoving them off the cliff either. You know, like I said, some clients, it takes a little bit longer and, you know, they'll say, oh, like three, you know, sessions in, which could be, you know, three quarters down the line or three years down the line, depending on how often they do it. They're like, oh, I finally get it. I'm finally loving myself. But my biggest thing is how can we mimic that in life? Mm -hmm. How can we step into the confidence? How can, you know, even when I started, you know, random thought, but started putting purple in my hair, I was like, who's going to think of what of me as, okay, are they going to think I'm less professional? Are they going to think I'm younger? Am I whatever? And I already get that being short. People are like, oh, you're like 20 years old. I'm like, nope, totally not. But, you know, and so I was this big thought of what everybody else is going to think and worry and all this stuff. All right. So... Jesse, here are your three options. Number one, your journey to joy. Number two, juggling, a podcast about life. And number three, finding your inner peace. All right. So I don't think it's juggling. Uh, I'm sure? liking Cause... one and three. Um, I do have a good habit of knocking out the first one. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that being right. So I think I'm just going to. I'm just going to let the odds lie. You know, I'm going to go with number three. Finding your inner peace. Finding your inner peace. Okay. So number three is unfortunately incorrect. It was your journey to joy. Although I can Mm -hmm. see why you picked it. It it does sound like it could have been the answer. I mean, I I would have stood up for juggling personally. I think the podcast about life did it for me at the end there. But That's me. I like my weirdly poetic and slant titles. Anyway, let's learn a bit about this podcast. This is your Journey to Joy podcast, where you'll hear inspiring stories from those who overcome all kinds of life's challenges. Tips on how to stay healthy during stress of life and simple ways of finding joy in your own life. So there you go. Short, sweet, and to the point. Now, we do actually have one clip left, so I'm going to leave it up to everyone to decide how we handle it. Um, we could just play it and throw everyone at it at once and have someone vote. Or if one of you who got it wrong want to go again and try to redeem yourselves, that's an option too. I actually think, Max, you might be the only one who got it wrong today, right? No, I did too. Oh, you, yeah, you just, just did, literally, right now. Okay. <laughs> literally. Do you want to you wanna go at it as a team and try and redeem yourselves or something? Sure. Yeah, or I like the idea of everybody doing it too. Let's just play the clip and figure out how we handle it next, I guess. So everybody close your eyes. Yeah, everyone cover your eyes. Sometimes it seems that the smaller the bird, the bigger the voice. Some of the noisiest species in the Americas are the wrens. Their loud chants and trills all out of proportion, the slightness of those slender bodies. The ruby-crowned kinglet, too. That bright-headed sprite of the treetops would be downright deafening if it were just a little bigger. Hummingbirds, of course, were originally named for the mechanical buzzing produced by their inconceivably fast wing beats. Okay, that is the end of the clip now. I will not be tricked. Really quick, let's fire off the three names for these shows. Number one, Bird Note. Number two, the Puteki Teki, the one true bird of the century. Number three... <laughs> Caca, y'all. 
<laughs> I'm losing it. I just want it. I want it to be could call y'all. <laughs> call y'all. <laughs> and it could very well be. I think it's either the first one or the last one. Bird Noter could call y'all. Really? Nobody here cares about the Puteki, Puteki or whatever it's called? Look, I, would, well, they, they, I would they, love they for it to be number Puteki. two. <laughs> you want it to be number two? <laughs> They were just comparing how all other birds are not as cool as a puteki. Each episode is like, here's why a hummingbird's not <laughs> as cool as a puteki. Yeah, they were talking about wrens and ruby-throated hummingbirds or something. Okay. Well, we still need to pick a choice, but unfortunately, it looks like everyone has just decided against the best name ever. Puteki? Yeah, I didn't know what that was until an hour ago, but I'm obsessed with saying it now. Can we add it into our podcast title? Like the headliner pod pod slash Puteki Puteki appreciation hour? Yeah. The Puteki Techie pod pod or whatever. I mean, if anyway. Puteki wants to sponsor us, I'm sure it could be arranged. For one, it's got to be number one. Bird it could note. be number one. Everyone's saying number oh, one. Y'all. Except oh, Ash. Y'all. <laughs> who has oh, seemingly y'all. seceded from the team and is voting for the third one by himself. I'm going to call y'all. I'm going to keep Dash. saying that. Dash are splitting. Let's, okay. let's divvy it up. We'll, we'll go against each other. That's how I'm signing off from now on. Could call y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, it's me and Dash against the world. Could yeah. Call you and Dash are unfortunately incorrect. It was actually Bird Note. So sorry. You guys literally jumped off of the Titanic when it turned out that it was fine. It only grazed the glacier. I'm fine going down with that ship. Could call y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Noted. The ship didn't go down in this scenario, but yes, understood. We didn't come to win. We came for the friends and the sign-offs <laughs> we found along the way. The sayings. <laughs> You got a good sign off out of it. So that counts for something. Let's learn a little bit about this show, though. Bird Note Daily is a two minute radio show that combines rich sounds with engaging stories to illustrate the amazing lives of birds and give listeners a momentary respite from the news of the day. So there you go. Actually, a really interesting idea for a podcast. And with that, that basically implies that we listened to about half of an episode today. So really cool. Yeah. As for the show itself, I really like the artwork. I'm assuming that is just episode art that we're looking at and not like the actual podcast art. Maybe it's talking about the specific bird. That being looks like the ruby, the ruby crowned or something they mentioned. I think it's the Puteki Teki. <laughs> yes. Puteki-teki. Oh, I'm hoping it's the Puteki Teki. It's actually a hummingbird. The Puteki Teki is much different looking to say That's the unfortunate. Least. This would be a big flex as, as the podcast cover. They're just like... We don't need text. You know what it is. You see the bird. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like Abbey Road gonna... in that regard. It doesn't need to label itself. You know what it is. <laughs> if you know, you know. It's like yeah. an insight type of podcast. <laughs> exactly. So very cool. I'm not into birding even remotely, but it is something that I've been interested in getting more into in terms of like the photography side. So probably going to keep that in my back pocket at two minutes an episode. So there you have it. We've played the game for the day, and it looks like we were about 50-50 in terms of right and wrong answers, right? Max, you got two. You missed two today. Dash missed one, and then Jesse missed one. Yeah, it's about half, just shy of it. So not bad. That might actually still be our best ratio to date in terms of getting them right. And we'll see if we can do better next time. So, yeah, thanks for listening. You're going to make a comeback. They listen to that hard rock song, Eye of the Tiger, and train all week, and (laughs) I'll get you next week. There you go. We'll see about that, Max. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. And yeah, bye. Bye.